Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno. Welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about functions in C++. What? A midweek video? Am I dreaming? Has Cherno gone crazy? Maybe, but that's not the point. I just wanna say a huge thank you for everyone who's enjoying the series. I'm really glad you guys are enjoying this because it's been a real blast to make. If you wanna show me how much you appreciate my videos, you can follow me on Instagram, link in the description below. Lately, I've been really into photography and it would mean the world to me if you guys could follow me. Just like, pause this video right now and just go and follow me. Anyway, back to functions. So what exactly are functions? Functions are basically blocks of code that we write that are designed to perform a specific task. Later, when we get to classes, those blocks are called methods. But when I say functions, I'm explicitly talking about something that isn't part of a class. It's pretty common for us to split up functions to prevent code duplication. We don't want to be writing the same code multiple times. Because of course, if we did, apart from copying and pasting a lot of code and just ending up with this huge mess, it also means that if we decide to change some code, we have to change it in all of those places where we pasted the original code and that's just gonna be a disaster to maintain. So what we can do instead is just write a nice little function that does what we want it to, and then we can call it multiple times in our code if we need to. You can think of functions as having an input and an output, although they don't necessarily need to. We can provide the function with certain parameters and the function can return a value for us. So suppose that we wanted to multiply two numbers together and we wanted to write a function that did that. So the first thing I'm going to write here is something called a return value. That is, this is the type that this function would return. Since we're multiplying two integers, that of course will result in an integer. So our return type is going to be int. I'm going to give the function a name, in this case multiply, and it's going to take two parameters. These are actually the numbers that we want to multiply together. I'll just call them a and b. I'll give the function a body and all this is going to do is return a times b. So you can see that we've got a function here that takes in two parameters, both integers, and simply returns the product of those two numbers. We don't necessarily have to provide parameters. For example, I could just not provide any parameters and return something like five times eight. This is still a function that returns an integer, but it's just not taking any parameters. We could also tell the function that we don't want it to return anything. And we do that by writing void as its return type. Void of course means nothing. So instead this could do something like log the result to the console. So let's go back to our original example here where we had int a and int b and we returned the product of those two integers. So how do we call this function? Well, calling a function is pretty simple. Let's go ahead and try and print the result of a multiplication. I'm going to first of all make a variable which holds this result. So I'll type int result equals multiply and we'll go with three and two. So what this is going to do is call this multiply function with these two parameters and then store the return value, that is this result of a times b in this result integer. We can then output that result to the console. Let's hit F5 to run our program. And after it builds, you can see that we get six, which of course is what three times two is. So let's kick this up a notch. Suppose that I want to do a bunch of multiplications and I want to log all of them to the console. If I do something like that without a function, then it would look pretty messy. So for example, I need to repeat this code. So let's go ahead and copy and paste it a few times. I'll call this something like result two, result three. We'll do eight times five, 90 times 45. And if I run my program and, oh, hang on a minute. Why am I getting the same value everywhere? Oh, look, when I copied and pasted this code, I forgot to change the variable. Now you may have thought that I did that by accident, but I actually did it on purpose to prove something. This actually happens all the time. People copy and paste blocks of code and then forget to change one minor detail. And in certain situations, you might actually just run your program and not even notice that it's not working correctly until it breaks somewhere down the line. And yet something like this can actually be fixed really easily if you just create a function for it. So let's go ahead and fix this by actually printing out result two and three. If I run this, we will get our correct results, which is great. However, you can see that I'm actually calling this multiple times and it's just a little bit annoying. Like for example, further down the road, if I decide to replace this multiply function by simply doing something like eight times five, look at this, I have to replace it in every single place. Three times two, 90 times 45, that's, I don't wanna to have to deal with that. So this multiplication and then logging the result, let's go ahead and make a function for that. It'll be void because it's not really going to return anything to us. It's just going to perform what we ask it to do. We'll call this something like multiply and log. And then let's take a look at which parameters we might want. So what actually changes between these three blocks of code? The values that we actually multiply, that's it. So those become the parameters for our function. 
What actually changes between these blocks of code? What needs to be specified for this function to perform its job? Let's go ahead and write in our parameters. So we're gonna be taking in two integers, A and B. You can really call them anything you want, but A and B seem sensible. We'll copy and paste one of these blocks into this function. This looks pretty good. Of course, I'll replace three and two with our parameters so that we're using the parameters we specify into this function to perform the multiplication against, which will cause A times B to get multiplied here. And then we're going to be logging our result to the console. So now, instead of doing this so many times, all I have to do is simply call multiply and log with my parameters. So three and two, for example, and then we have eight and five, and then we have 90 and 45. And that's it. Look at that, I can get rid of all of this code and this is what we end up with. A nice, clean and easy to read program. If I launch my program, you can see that we get the correct values here. So this is a pretty simple example, but I think it's effective in demonstrating that functions are really, really important. You should be aiming to split up your code into many, many functions. However, one thing that I wanna stress is don't go overboard. You don't need a function for absolutely every line of code. That's not gonna be good for anyone. It's gonna be hard to maintain, your code's gonna look messy and cluttered, and it's actually gonna make your program slower. Every time we call a function, asterisk, the compiler generates a call instruction. What this basically means is that in a running program, in order for us to call a function, we need to create the entire stack frame for the function, meaning we have to push things like the parameters onto the stack. We have to also push something called a return address onto the stack. And then what we do is we actually jump to a different part of our binary in order to start executing the instructions from our function. And that return value that we push, we need to get back to where we originally were before we call the function. So there's this whole like jumping around memory in order to execute function instructions and all of that takes time. So it slows down our program. Now, the reason I said asterisk earlier was because this is all assuming that the compiler decides to keep our function as an actual function and doesn't inline it. We're gonna talk in depth about inlining in a future video. So the reason I'm saying all this is because you don't want to just go ahead and create a function for absolutely every line of code. Don't be ridiculous about it. It takes a little bit of experience to realize what you need a function for, but basically if you see yourself doing a common task multiple times, create a function for that. The primary point of functions is to prevent code duplication. We don't want to just be copying and pasting code everywhere. Now, if we go back to our code for just a second, you might've noticed something a little bit odd about this main function. It says that its return value is int. However, the return keyword is nowhere to be found and I'm obviously not returning anything. So if I specify a return value, do I actually need to return something? Let's go ahead and try and just do nothing in this multiply function. I'll hit Control F7 to compile my file. Look at this, I'm getting an error telling me that multiply must return a value. So do functions with a return type actually need to return values? The answer is yes, they do. The main function is actually a special function. The main function, and only the main function, is exempt from this kind of must return a value. If you don't specify a return value, it will automatically assume that you're returning zero. So it will be identical to if I had written this. This is just a feature of modern C and C++ versions that lets you just keep your code a little bit cleaner. And just for fun, know that this must return a value thing is actually something that only applies in debug mode. If we compile and release mode here, you'll see that we actually don't get an error. That's not to say that what we're doing here is correct, because if we actually do capture that return value and decide to do something, we will get undefined behavior. It's just that the compiler won't actually yell at us. However, in debug mode with certain debug compilation flags enabled, we will get an error, which will just help us debug our code. Because at no point should you be writing a function that says it's gonna return something but doesn't. Okay, so that's pretty much a basic introduction to functions. Functions are really useful. I'm gonna be writing a lot more of them in the future. Every program is built from a collection of functions. So this is really important stuff. If you don't think you fully understand how functions work, don't worry because throughout this series, we're gonna be writing so many functions that you're just gonna get used to it. And the best way to learn is of course to practice. We also commonly break up functions into declarations and definitions. So declarations we usually store in header files and then definitions we write in translation units or CPP files. Soon I'm gonna make a whole video dedicated to header files and we're gonna cover function declarations in header files in that video. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you really enjoyed this video and you wanna see drafts of future videos early, as well as discuss what actually goes into these videos, you can support me on Patreon. Link will be in the description below. But until next time, guys, goodbye.